And we're going to let Matt eventually make his way over here because uh, we saw something Friday night that is very rare for this part of the country. Of course, we're talking about the Northern Lights. Yep, many of us here in Central Alabama were able to see them. I know many of you did and you were so excited, uh, mostly using your iPhones. So why were we able to see them so far south? Matt Daniel is over here now to talk about this. And I want to ask you the first question that I asked you when you came in today. Okay. Why was this not something that we were talking about ahead of time? Because I think a lot of us were surprised that we learned about it Friday afternoon. And people were asking me that. So what's the answer? Well, uh, think of it as an earthquake. We can't warn you in, in advance when an earthquake is going to happen. You observe it, then you can tell people what's going to happen. And then we have to forecast, is there going to be a tsunami after that earthquake forms? So that's sort of how it works. They uh, monitor uh, the space weather, they monitor the sun, and uh, they look at those solar flares coming out. And if they see a solar flare, uh, you know, maybe sometimes uh, they are able to uh, show uh, uh, how strong and intense it is. And so just and it's within a day or so, that's when we usually see uh, how strong it is. So uh, th these are some of those pictures of those northern lights. And just to give you an idea, you know, they, they rank these just like the Storm Prediction Center ranks uh, outlook. So if we say it's like a marginal risk, one out of five, it's a low threat, five being the greatest. Mm -hmm. They do a s similar scale. And uh, they ended up with a uh, geomagnetic storm watch of either a G4 or G5, which is pretty much unheard of. I know we reported uh, back in October 2003 was the last time we saw something that intense. But you have to think about it, 2003, we didn't even have social media. Media, you know, right. phones so it really just, was a surprise to yeah, people. Social media wasn't really around, and you know, phones were just starting to get more active. And uh, you know, here it was easier to see through the phone because of the uh, magnetic field yeah. Yeah. Uh, hitting the atmosphere, showing us those reds and green colors. But you, it was you, just quite impressive. You know, what was odd too is that from where my location was, I could mostly see it when I looked to the west. Yeah. Instead of north, I know that sounds odd, um, but it's a good thing they didn't uh, order say it was going to be a G sick. We really would have been in trouble. But <laughs> <Right>. no, Matt, <laughs> sorry, bad humor. All right, so seriously, look at some of these images, though, Matt. I mean, you'd have to normally go to Norway or Iceland, yeah. Alaska, parts of Canada to yeah, see. Yeah, we were talking earlier. This is like on some people's vacation list of things yeah. they really yeah. want to do. Uh, yeah, this is a bucket list for my myself. I was unable to see it because of the city lights in Birmingham, and I even drove around a little bit, still couldn't see it. I was really upset but I'm happy for those who are able to see it. <laughs> and you know, what's interesting about uh, geomagnetic storms and solar weather, you know, space weather is not my expertise. I find it very interesting. Uh, and it's very complicated, it's very technical. Uh, even if, even when I look, yeah, we can show my graphics. When, when it comes to uh, geomagnetic storms, these are those levels I was telling you about. And normally they're ones, twos, and threes. And that's usually farther north in latitude. So you're not going to get those kind of colors here in Alabama. It has to be extreme. And so what happened Friday night was extreme, maybe even generational. I mean, we may not even see this happen again in our lifetime. So mm. very rare. And that's why we were saying maybe it could be another, another level five Saturday night. Or uh, we're hoping. I was little, I was hoping. I was hoping as well, but I had a lot of doubts because when an extreme event happens like that, it is hard to replicate that again. Yeah. Uh, so um, we were really uh, fortunate. I didn't see much in the way of reports of power grids being shut down, and that's the other thing with space weather. Right. We're monitoring that for our safety mm -hmm. because if it's extremely strong, it can knock out uh, radio waves, frequencies. It can knock out satellites, GPS, and even power grids, and that's a huge safety concern for all of us. So sure. why are you able to see it, and why do we need to go north when we go to to see it somewhere else? Yeah, so, What's happening there all the time? So you have the magnetic field, you have a little weakness, and you get all those charged uh, in the poles and so you're going to see it in the northern latitudes only but if it's so much energy it can spread even farther and so we saw these solar flares from the sun uh, happen Friday as you were saying and if you had your eclipse glasses you could actually put your eclipse glasses on and if you looked at the sun and during the daylight you could see a little black dot on the sun those were the sunspots oh, hmm. and that's wow. the energy that came off the sun and then hit Earth, but we have satellites that detect that energy. So that energy will hit the satellites a sensor and it'll let you know how strong it is. And so, like you said, we only had a little bit about five, six hours warning because yeah. we got that energy, knew how strong it was. They put out that watch and then we were able to see in real time. So that Friday evening, I was on social media and I knew it was going to be a big deal when I noticed everything in Europe, everybody in Europe, just about. Yeah. When they were nighttime, yeah. they were seeing those colors ah. far south. Yeah, somebody on a plane in London, they, yeah. it was amazing to see what was coming out of London. It was simply amazing. And so when the sun set, and we were fortunate enough, the weather was nice, we had clear conditions. Yep. 
I was like, okay. And was it even more than what they could have predicted? Well, yeah, because uh, it was a G4 watch. That was what they were mentioning. Uh, we weren't thinking it was going to be a G5, but it was a G4. And then when it happened, they upgraded it. Oh. Yeah. And we were able to see it all the way down towards Florida. I heard Mexico where it was yeah. able to see it. Yeah, the Caribbean. I mean, yeah. super rare, re yeah. really generational. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. if you're wondering why we're all hyped up and excited <laughs> about it, because it is so unusual to see. Well, uh, if it is generational, that means apparently you and Janice uh, have a bucket list trip still to make to Iceland, I guess. I just got to go traveling, buddy. We, we should, but that's the difficult part because you have to make plans to travel and hope that the sun's active yeah. and then just hope that where you're at, it's not raining or that's storming. Because yeah. people can still go on those trips and it miss is, it. That's right. It is yeah. so difficult. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's so unusual and so cool. Well, I have thoroughly enjoyed your pictures, your photos. Yes. Yes. A friend Thanks of mine, Alyssa sure. McCullough, she had some beautiful photos, mm -hmm. and I enjoyed those, Cynthia. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, and on our WBRC First Alert weather app, I mean, we got dozens, hundreds of those pictures, and I was just cycling through it, and I'm like, jealous, jealous, <laughs> jealous, <laughs> jealous, but impressive. All right, well, thanks for explaining yeah. it a little bit better. It was just cool to us. It was indeed. It is cool. <laughs> Sheldon, did you get to see him in Gardendale? I didn't stay up that late, guys. <laughs> but I did have some friends who put up a pink light in their living room to give them that effect because they couldn't see it. So they, they lived it that way. I thought that was kind of cool that they came up with that idea.